Hi everybody, how you doing? It's been a while since I came to you with messages of the heart. And I uh, do remember that we're on letter G. And I would be remiss if I did not talk about anything but God for the letter G. I have four points that I want to talk to you about. I'm going to go through quickly because uh, I notice if I talk too long, it takes longer to download. And um, I'm really excited to get this out to you. I'm going to be looking away from the camera periodically and you probably hear the pages flipping and everything like that. But I want to make sure I get everything right. And the four points um, that I want to talk about is what he's done for me, what he can do for you, how to find him, and what you can do for him. This is Messages of the Heart by Arlene Rogers, Will Hyde Williams. And we are on letter G. For those of you that just may be finding this on the internet or hearing it on Facebook or anything, I've decided to make um, a series from letters A to Z about um, different things that affect my life with each alphabet. And uh, sometimes I'll be saying something about my personal history and sometimes I'll just be saying whatever um, I feel that is appropriate at the time okay and uh, when I get to letter I I will do a recap once I find my notes <laughs> because I, I, I understand and I remember most of what I've done but just for the sake of time right now I just want to get started and um, like I said the letter G we're going to talk about God you know, I've always understood that when you're talking about God, it's not to make you believe as I believe, but it's just for my belief that it is required of me to let people know about God in some kind of way, fashion or form, because he has changed my life and uh, made me whole. And so I want to do what is required of me, and that's to let other people know that he is real. First of all, I want to say that what he's done for me, God has given me his peace. In Philippians 4, 7, it says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Jesus Christ. Now, when I give you these scriptures, I'm not going to break them down like I'm some pastor or something. I'm just going to tell you about how it affected me and my life. And when it says that God has given me a peace that surpasses all understanding, it's not a lie. For me, I am totally at peace. I'm at peace with everything about my life, my past, and my future. I know that God wants me to have a better life. And I've been knowing it for a long time, but I chose to live a hard life. I didn't have to live a hard life, but I chose that. And it almost took me out the game in some parts of another of my life. But thank God, he found favor. He gave me favor, I should say. And he gave me enlightenment. And I think it's because he wants me to talk to some of you. Because uh, he knows that I will. Because I like running my mouth. <laughs> but it shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. For me, that means that... If I try to surrender my life to God on a daily basis, through Jesus Christ, I'm going to be at peace. I'm going to have that peace that passes all understanding. When people get on my nerve, when um, I don't understand what's going on in my life, God's peace is going to come over me. And it just takes that all away. And sometimes I have to catch myself. I be wanting to go over that fence and handle it my way again but i have to remember my way got me in trouble in the first place so that right there that's what god has done for me and when people come up to me and they always tell me you know you look like you're always happy you know and some people be like how can you be so happy all the time it's because i have that peace that passes all understanding you know and i love it and um i experienced it once before but not to this magnitude but now I have it inside of me to a point where I don't want to ever be without it I really don't 
Okay, now part two is what he can do for you. And the bottom line is, is he can give you life eternally. And you would have to have an experience on your own. And having that experience is like I say, you have to truly surrender. And a lot of times we take up the cross and we put it back down. Or I should say, we get our problems, and some of us that believe in Jesus Christ and God and the Holy Spirit, we give it to them, and then we take it back. Meaning that we try to work out everything on our own. And, and you know, we can't do that. We just can't do it. Once we give it to God, we got to get on. And the way we get on is to establish understanding that we have that peace that passes all understanding. Because it's going to be taken care of. And he said he's going to take care of it. He's going to do that. And it says, what... What uh, he can do for you is found in Revelations 22 and 14. There's a lot of scriptures that tells you what he can do for you. But I like this one where he says, Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life. Again, he's been giving you that gift, that life eternally. Man, all he wants us to do is to do his commandments. A lot of people think that the commandments have been done away with, but you do your own research, they haven't been. Because God says that when we go into heaven, when we get into the kingdom of God, you know, that we're going to be judged by the commandments. That's how important they are. Now, if they were done away with, why would he judge us by them? Okay? Just some food for thought. Okay, like I said, I ain't going to get deep or nothing like that because not only would I get myself tricked up, but, you know, I just don't have the time for it. But this is some little research that I did for myself. And another scripture is that what he can do for you. In Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28, and 30, it says, Come unto me, all that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, normally, back in the day, when I used to just glide over scriptures that just was general to me it's like okay come on to me and I will give you rest okay da, 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 I'm gonna go to Jesus he's gonna give me rest but this time even as I was doing this little research right here and it came to me when it says come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy burden and I will give you rest I'm like what is he talking about is he talking about those of us who work a nine to five and uh it came to me, no. Do you know that when we work at sinning, that is wear and tear on our mind, body, and soul. It is wear and tear on our mind, body, and soul. It takes a lot of work to sin. People say sin is easy, but trust me, sin is not easy. Because you get out there in the world or, you know, you get caught up in a relationship and you get caught up in what you're doing. And the next thing you know, you know, you are laboring to keep that going, to get out of it, to find something else to get into. And then that's when it dawned on me and it says, come unto me, all ye that labor. So basically it's like saying, come unto me, all of you that's sinning, that's out there doing things against the principles of God. And... You're heavy laden because you're out there. And some of us know we don't want to be out there. We don't want to be caught up in the mix and all like that. But we get so caught up and involved that, you know, next thing you know, we are burdened. We are heavy laden. We're tired. We're sick. We're on the verge of dying, you know, all of that. And so this is, for me, that is all in that scripture that you come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. And Jesus is saying that if you bring all of that mess onto me, you know, I will take it from you. You know, I will give you a peace that passes all understanding. And another thing about being heavy, heavy laden is that you're, it's a rest from the havoc in your life. You know, because we go... We learn how to, to worry. We learn how to stress. And we just learn how to give up. And we just learn how to doubt. And that is work on, on your mentality. You know. And then what you carry on in the inside. If 
flows out to other people, you know, then you're making other people's lives miserable. So that scripture is in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, and Revelation 22, 14. It says what he can do for us. He can give us life eternally. He can give us the right to the tree of life if we surrender to him and do his commandments. And then he will give us rest from our heavy lightning. And then 29, it says that, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And to learn of me, it goes back to the other scripture, which I didn't write down. It says, search the scriptures and show yourself approved. So that means to understand you have to do this for yourself. This is not a group plan. You know, this is not a mama got it for me plan or a daddy got it for me plan. This is a you and Jesus only plan. Then, and I don't want to get ahead of myself. Then once you get on this plan, then it becomes a group plan because you go out and share to other people what he has done for you. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. But it says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls. And again, that goes back to all that being laboring in our sins because when we are laboring in our sins, our souls are so disturbed. It's, it's so disturbed. Our mind is just boggling. And again, I'll get into that later too. But our mind is so boggled with stuff of this world. And our soul is so unrest that we need to take up Christ's yoke and learn of him. So if we learn of him, we'll have that peace that passes all understanding. And lastly, it says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light for me. This means that my yoke is easy means Christ has already done it for us. He's already bared it. He's been to the cross. He's died for us. So if we take his yoke, you know, it's like, it's, it's already done. That's why he says my yoke is easy because he's done the, the hard part already. And then he says my burden is light. And the reason why the burden is light is because the only thing that he requires of us is to do what he has commanded us to do and that's to live by his commandments you know to testify of him to tell people about him and he's done the footwork and all we have to do is just maintain and by maintaining we're surrendering to get that peace that passes our understanding now number three how do we find him how do we find him be still just be still. I've learned that the hard way. But if we be still, that gives the Holy Spirit a chance to oil our bodies, our insides, and start giving that love and that that peace within us. Once we be still and say, God, I can't do this no more. I need you. And the Holy Spirit comes in and starts grooming us, you know. And uh, it's just lovely. It's lovely, you know. And I've had experiences with Christ all my life, you know. I was raised in a Christian household, everything. And from a, being a child, I always knew about God, but I knew it from second hand. I knew it from my grandma, I knew it from my mom, I knew it from the pastor or preacher or whatever. But I never knew it for myself. Then as I got older, I even studied the Bible. But... I just studied it. And by the way, I was just talking the other day to people about how sometimes we, when we start studying the Bible, and I hope you don't get into this trick back, when you start studying the Bible for yourself, don't try to intellectualize it. Let the Holy Spirit oil you and move you through the scriptures. And always pray for God to give you guidance. And let the Holy Spirit come into your life, come into your mind, and come into your soul and let him move you into the scriptures. Don't try to intellectualize it. Personalize it. And in Mark 
439. I love this. It says, And he rose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Now we can get real deep off into this one little scripture because it talks. Of, this is about the time when, when Christ had walked on the water to, to Peter. And Peter met him and he fell off in there and all that good stuff. Look it up. Okay, Mark and, and Mark, Mark 4:39. And he rose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a calm. Now, to me, to me, when he arose and rebuked the winds. Again, the winds is like sin and everything all up in your head, you know, and everything you go through in life is just so much is going on. You know, the wind is one thing, but it's a lot going on, you know. It's, and then he said unto the sea. Now the sea was tossing and going back and forth like that. And sometimes in our life, our life is going like the sea, you know, it's just going back and forth, you know, and this like the wind's going, psh, 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 you know. I don't like that. Just crazy. Just chaotic. And that's the way it was on that ship that day. And the disciples got up, upset. I sound like my dear describing this. <laughs> but anyway, but it was really, really just chaotic on that ship. And they were scared. They were scared. But Jesus arose, you know, and he said to the winds and to the sea, peace, be still. And that's what we got to do as we go in our daily lives, working, going to school, taking care of this, taking care of that, doing this, doing that. That's the winds and the sea just, psh, 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 psh. you know what I'm saying? And we just have to be still. You have to be still because you can't serve God. You can't be a part of this whole beautiful thing if you got so much going on in your life that you don't realize that you got the master on the ship with you. If you got the master on the ship with you, you don't have have no worries you know anyway i'm getting all involved but it says the wind ceased and there was a great calm when it says a great calm to me that means it was a total life change it was a total life change a major change in the disciples life because they was like whoa now we seen bro man do a lot of things and i don't mean no disrespect on jesus bro man but we seen him do a lot of things and now the sea and the winds even obey him. Do you know that must have tripped him out? That was a total life change. Now for, for me, when the winds ceased in my life and I surrendered to God, there was a total life change. I had to make a decision. Now, as I go forward, I've gone forward before, but I backslid. But this time, I had to take a lot of the elements around in my life and realize, you know, do I have time to backslide again? Do I want to backslide again? Is it worth backsliding again? You know, am I going to die in my sins? And then if I don't die in my sins and I don't spread the word, you know, then what, what was the whole purpose of me being saved? You know? So I have to think about that too. So it was a major, major life change for me. A total life change. Excuse me. A great calming of the seas and the storm within me. And last, what can you do for him? Now, I'm going to read this fast because I've been daydreaming and slowly going on. But in reality, not anything. There's not anything that we can do for God. God is a stickler, though, for self-esteem. He wants to empower us. And it is this empowerment where many of us get lost. We start thinking it's about us. But, as the song goes, it's not about us, it's about Jesus. Therefore, all we can do for God is tell the world, our hoods, our friends, strangers on the street, about his son and the sacrifice his son made for us. That's all we can do. That's all we can do. That's all that is required of us once we have given our lives to God. Once we have obtained that peace that passes all understanding, all God wants us to do is to share the blessing. Pass it on. Give it to somebody else to let them know, you know. Especially if people know from whence you come, you know. Like a lot of people know 
you know, I've been back and forth in the church, back and forth in the church. There's some people waiting in the background to see if I fall again. Oh, well, let them see. But in my heart, in my heart, I know that my whole well-being centers on giving God my life. And that's what I've done in my life. In Mark 16, 15, it says, Go ye into the world, your hood, your friends, stores, schools, wherever anyone will listen to you, and preach the gospel to every creature. Empower yourself with the word of God. It's the only book I know that gives you eternal life through the teachings of Jesus Christ and his promises. And his promises are his bond. His word is bond. I believe it. I trust it. I believe it. I have faith in it. Most empowerment books teach you about how to get wealthy. But if you diligently give your life to God, your gift is eternal life. And that is all the wealth you will need. Everything else comes with it. And you don't have to work for it, pay for it, slave for it. Just be still and know that he is God. Now, I hope that you were blessed by this little quick uh, synopsis of the letter G, what God means to me, what he can do for you, how to find him, and what you can do for him. God bless you. If you have any questions, leave some in the little box down there or just... Hit me up on Facebook. You'll find me. God bless you. I'm out. One love.